This is ECGR 4101, 5101, Embedded Systems. This is lecture number 15, I believe, right? So, um, the embedded application of the day is this wonderful toy. Um, what uh, I had uh, some students do in my lab is they created a, uh, our, uh, they were somewhat successful in creating this, uh, this version of a Nerf machine gun. Um, and what it entailed was taking a, an existing gun like this and automating the trigger over here with, uh, with a control signal. And you know what, I think I just pulled out some of this stuff. And inside here, inside is an Arduino. You, you finished up with Arduino, right? Yeah. All right. With uh, an additional board that has some uh, some extra extra special things involved in it, and in fact, if uh, let's see how well we can do this, uh, can you hand me the uh, the camera on the tripod itself? You. Oh, easy. <laughs> uh, do I unplug? All right. Somebody's gonna get dizzy when it it's it's going. Just keep on going. All right. Here's hoping and. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this on here so you can see it inside. And uh, in this Arduino board and the, and the controller, it is uh, attached to an infrared sensor, which actually detects people or actually uh, detects anything in front of it. And if it detects it within, how much of a distance was it? Uh, it's not any particular distance, it's any change. It first scans, mm -hmm. see what's in front, and then if there's something different there, it shoots out. Ah, in other words, it's looking for anything that changes in a specific distance. And it's always searching, and if it finds something, it hones in on it. Then it turns the entire turret, and then fires. We're going to try and get this working for the next, uh, for the next uh, class for an embedded system app of the day. And just if you want to look at it a little bit more detail, uh, this is the... Arduino board, and I've probably just uh, trashed the whole thing by poking at it, but uh, oh well, we'll look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and continue with our lecture. If you could make sure to line this up and plug it in, and make sure it's aligned correctly up here. And then I think for, uh, for your sake, we'll pull this out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you didn't get that on film, did you? Uh, <laughs> Sam, I don't think it's going to work anymore. <laughs> He's got two days. So, one thing to uh, to mention is that anytime you work with uh, little little projects like this, um, I would recommend in the future that. Uh, uh, when you do any sort of embedded, embedded system, if you intend on moving it at all, ever, to try it out, that you need locking connectors for everything. One reason why is, of course, it's easy to connect and disconnect connectors, but more importantly, um, many, 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 many problems have been uh, created in these uh, prototype systems when suddenly something works loose and it's not connected and you spend lots of time trying to look for it. So I do recommend that you have as beefy connectors as possible to, uh, to attach to everything. So something to, to think about in, in the future, right? Right. Sorry. All right, let's continue on. Uh, feel free to, uh, hey, look at this. Something at the front says uh, quiz code. So I'll give you a hint what this is for. I described earlier a I described earlier a process by which we put things on a queue and took it off. And so that's what I'm going to spend a little bit of time today to uh, go over is this queue work. And in fact, you're going to see something very similar to this in uh, a future exercise like a lab or 
or uh, homework or something like that. So uh, again, remember I had a structure, and here's the structure. This is, in fact, there are four slides in your uh, in the presentation. This is just the code from those four slides. Same thing. And uh, in this case, I changed the Q size to eight from the code, and we have defined a structure. And again, keep in mind, oh, come on. For some reason, this thing wants to uh, keep on changing its, uh, its focus. So can we see that OK? All right. So again, look how we are using this structure in C. Of course, anytime we use for example, this comes in as, this is the definition of the structure, Q underscore T, which is a pointer to, and you're passing to a process, a pointer. The pointer then will look at each of the individual elements, data, head, tail, and size are going to be uh, set to zero, because at this point in time, remember our Q that looked like this, This is the zeroth element, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, since it's a length of eight. And we set the head and the tail to point to the same thing. And of course, the size of it is zero. <coughs> then, when you go through, and this is, I didn't go through the code, but I just went through an example. If you were to ever enqueue anything, in other words, you have a, uh, an interrupt service routine that will actually queue something up or that will actually receive a character, and the interrupt service routine, or I should say the, the function which handles data receiving, will run and it will execute this particular piece of code. And this particular piece of code is going to check to see if it's full, and it will put something on. So let us go through an example of this using the code. And um, I'll use a, uh, another piece of paper to help out. And keep in mind that, in fact, I think I'll switch back to the uh, example here. You already have uh, on your, in your hands a piece of paper that shows what the code is. And so as we're working along with, uh, with the example, maybe I'll do it on the board too. Uh, can we actually see this part of the board on the camera? That my yeah. hand is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do it on the paper because then I'll just have to switch between the two. Because then it's a permanent record and, and you might be able to see it a little bit easier. So let's say I received, again we're going to look at the situation, we'll set up our, we'll set up our uh, array or our structure and our structure will be of the type QT. And if we look at the code in the two situations of, of running our uh, application, Notice what's going on right here. We now have two queues. We have TXQ and RXQ. Guess what it stands for? You transmit queue and you receive queue. You could, you could use the same concept for sending something out as well. So in our, uh, our format of QT, We have set RXQ and TXQ, and these are pointers. So if we look at RXQ, which is our received Q, and that's what I'm going to concentrate on, we have the, uh, the Q itself. In our structure, it's called data, correct? And you're going to refer to it 
with some sort of index. You're also going to have RxQ and you will look at head. You will also look at RxQ and tail and RxQ size size, yep, first letters, capital. In particular then, anytime we go through the code, we're going to modify this. So this is going to be our, I'll draw the Q this way, how about that? Because it shows, let's say in this case, uh, my size is going to be 8, even though the, uh, um, the slide here shows that it's 32, let's call it 8 so we have a better idea of uh, following along. So if I have the following instruction, let's receive the byte hex 40, uh, 48, then we'll receive hex 45, then we'll consume hex, oh, we'll consume one. Then we'll receive hex 52, and then we'll consume one. What is going to be the contents of all, all of these uh, pieces of code? I'm sorry. What's going to be the contents of all of these uh, um, values, these variables. So let's take a look up here. This is the code that you have, which I'm just going to show up on, uh, on this sheet of paper because it's easier than switching between the two. But the first one is called NQ. By the way, then I'm going to, uh, just for grins, I'll receive the values of 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 6, 20, 20, just to give you an idea of what happens. So we're going to receive the first one. So our Serial communications queue or our serial communications function is going to call this. We're passing to it two things. Number one, whichever queue we're working with, which in this case is the RX underscore underscore Q pointer, and then the actual character. So in this case, the character is 48. If the queue is full, what we're passing to this is a subroutine called full. Right here is the subroutine itself. Q, and all you're doing is you're checking size. And is the size equal to the maximum size that you have? The maximum Q size is a, uh, a pound defined, which we already defined up here is 8 for this example. So you're going to compare whatever the size is, first time through the size is equal to, right now this is all zero, 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 and there's the contents right there. So the first time through it's zero, is zero equal to eight? Yes or no? No. So the result of this equal to 8 will be the value of false or 0. 0 will be returned if not full. So obviously, so if it's not full, then you'll do something. First thing you do is, in the, uh, the data itself, you look at tail. What is the value of tail? 
Zero. Zero. So whatever Q is in tail, you're going to put D into it. So D in this case is 48. So at this point, I'm going to put the hex value of 48 right here. And lo and behold, in the same line, post increment. The next thing is, I will adjust. If I reach the end, remember I said you have to wrap back to the original. Have I reached that point? Well, the value of K up tail is 1. Q size is 8. The remainder of 1 divided by 8 is, or the mod of 1 by 8 is 1. So in other words, tail will remain 1. The size I will then increment, and then I will return 1. In the, in the parlance of returning from functions, usually 1 means good. Sometimes 1 means, or 0 means good, which is unfortunate because 1 usually means true. Uh, you should, in your company, whoever designs your, uh, Whoever designs your, your style guide for your company should identify what 0 and 1 means as a return or what a return from a function means. It is good practice to actually return, in this case, look, it's returning an integer, something that identifies the state. There will be one situation where you don't return the state, and that is for the DQ here, you notice you're returning the actual character that you're consuming. <clears throat> All right, so now we have received the uh, next character, which is 45. You check to see if it's full. Is the Q full? Uh, just by examination, this value uh, size is still 1, so we're in good shape. Then we will uh, put the value of 45 hex here. And in the same line, you increment tail to be 2. And then uh, you increment size, return 1. Seems easy. Now the next thing you do is some consumer is going to run this code. Specifically, you're passing to it, pull a character from it. You give it a temporary value of 0. That way you know later on if you're checking that the character is zero, that means it's either the null character, you're at the end, or something went wrong. So is the Q empty? Let's look at the code for Q empty. Is the size equal to zero? Obviously, if you have nothing to read, just quit. Because you don't want to have to change the variable like head or tail if there's nothing there. Obviously, you are then going to take a look at the value of head. In this case, head is the, uh, the first value of something that's good. We'll take whatever that value is, and we'll put it into t. So we have this temporary value of t, which we're going to set equal to hex 48. Next thing you do is, uh, notice there's a post increment of head, so now this value changes to 1. And oh, by the way, look what it also does. It puts a 0 into that memory location. And we do that so it's easier to debug later. Then you check to see if uh, you've gone beyond the end of this. You have not yet. Then you decrement the size, and then you return the actual character. Uh, just for grins, I'm going to uh, wipe this one out so it'll go faster. All right, next up, we're going to receive an NQ value of 40 or 52. You pretty much follow with the code that this goes to 52. This will increment the 3, this will increment the 2. You all agree with that? 
Y'all, I like that. For my, uh, my viewers, and by the way, I have viewers of these things in India and Brazil and Egypt. So, uh, so we're going viral. That's a joke, all right? So, we've done this, we've done this, done this, this. Next one, 20. So, we read in 20. I think we can pretty much figure out how the code is going to go. Increment to 4, increment to 3. Did that one. All right, next one is 20. Increment this to 5, increment this to 4. This one's done. 20, increment this to, or put that in there, increment this to 6, increment this to 5, this one's done. Next one is 20, this goes to 7, this goes to 6, this one's done. Next one is 20, this goes 20 in here, this goes to 8. Now, this is where I should probably look at the code. I've now incremented tail to 8. And that's the post increment. So you look at the next line. 8 mod 8 is 0. So in that next line, this goes off to 0. The next line, size plus plus, or size increment 7. That's very nice. We're done. Next one we look at is 20. So let's look at what it says. 20. Whatever our tail is, the tail is now 0. So this becomes hex 20 to be 0, remember? Mm -hmm. We're going to increment the tail. Tail is now 1. Increment. And by the way, we'll check tail. Tail uh, mod Q size of 8 still is going to be 1. Then we increment the, uh, the size. 8. Then we're done. We return. So obviously, this puppy is full, right? This, this array is full. That's, that's another word for puppy, right? So uh, the next time, pardon me? Why do you have 8? Shouldn't it end at 7? Tail? Well, tail, uh, remember at this point here it was 8, but we did the mod on it first. Remember at this point right here? Yeah. Tail was 8. We modded it with the size, which was 8. 8 mod 8 is 0, so it's never actually a real reference. Notice up here the reference was using 7, mm -hmm. and after you stored the data in there, then you incremented the variable tail. Okay. But the interesting thing to note is that size is 8. So the next time we go through and we try and consume, if the Q is full, so the first thing it does is it checks Q size is the value of 8. Q size is equal to 8 is equal to 8. It is going to return the value of 1. So if not 1, it'll go down to the else, return 0, failure. So we don't adjust this at any way. And that is an example of what would happen, and that's why it's called a circular queue. You saw here, we filled, 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 consumed one at the front, kept on filling, filling, wrapped around to the front, filled, and if I had had something in here that was consumed, then I would have been in better shape. So, you all want to practice that one more time, or do you want to go straight to the quiz? Practice it one more time. So, I will give the following in-class exercise for you to follow along. So, you will... Receive the value of 4, 1, which is, by the way, which character? Capital A. Capital A. Consume. Receive. 42. 
consume. Just for fun, let's try and consume. And then uh, receive hex 43. So, with one of your neighbors next to you, I want you to give me a sheet of paper. I will call one of you. That will show me just stuff like this. So go ahead and show me something like that. So take a few minutes, uh, turn to your neighbor, and uh, try and figure out this one right here. Nothing will be dependent to data. Yeah. Well, not only that, but you can't decrease the size anymore because it's already consumed everything. Because, you know, it's empty. Well, you get there. Maybe I'll see that in the future. Uh, I don't know. So can you divide by here? Because isn't Q size zero initially, or just Q size getting max? Q size at consume? No, at the very beginning it starts at zero, right? So no, you wouldn't worry about that because it is empty. So Q, so one mod zero would be one. I don't think that function would even. Thank you. 
That gets incremented. And then uh, one mod, Q size is one. What's one mod? Is A zero? <laughs> yeah. And then decrement size. All right, who needs more time? All done? All righty. So it looks like uh, Team Rocket at the top uh, did the best. I mentioned that my son joined the gang and he's now a member of Team Rocket. He's got this shirt with a big old R on it. Anybody know who Team Rocket is? Yeah. Pokemon? All right. <laughs> so, is this right? <laughs> Should I go through the example? I like this. I like this. So who up there uh, in, my, in my crew up there has not got a trip to the prize closet? Who deserves one? Mr. Mr. Wolf has been through. So. I don't deserve it. Who deserves it? None of you? All right, you get to have to. Unless you want to switch. Unless you want to stress ball. I have one of those. So the, uh, oh, so you want the, uh, so you want the stress ball, right? You want that? I think you're going to have to fight the owner for it. So, uh, all right. Let's take a look at this. Following the code again. Zero, zero, zero. And then all of these will be set at zero. The next step is this will contain 41. The head will remain zero, but the tail will change to one. Size will change to one. Then you consume that, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes back to the size. Size zero. I'm sorry. The head of one. The tail will remain. The size is zero, and the contents of this will go back to zero. Next is 42, and so 42 is put at this position. The tail will increase to 2, the size will go up to 1. Next we do is we consume 1. And so 42 will be consumed, the head will go to 2, the tail remains at 1, the size is at 0, and the contents here go to zero. The next thing that happens is we try to consume again, but in this case, in the consumer, you will check empty. In this case, up here, if the size is equal to zero, you return a, if zero is equal to zero, you get a one, right? If not empty, you go straight down to return T. What will it return? What value? Zero, just like you define T is zero right there. By the way, I should probably add return 42, return 41, and that's X. The next one is you will store 43 here. The tail will increase to 3. The size will increase to 1. Again, that's hex. 
Easy enough? All right, I can get it to the next subject. Or I could just call this a, uh, uh, give you a quiz and call it a work, remaining work day. What do you think? Remaining work day. All right, that being it, thank you very much. If you can get the camera.